Hello, everybody. I know I am way late to the party on Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I actually saw it shortly after it came out, but I haven't really been able to talk about it yet as I've been fighting off a nasty cold and haven't been able to speak without sounding congested as hell. But I have more or less recovered, so let's talk about it. This was directed by George Miller and stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth and is a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. It tells the story of Furiosa's life prior to Fury Road, split into five chapters. It begins with her abduction from the Green Place and her being forced to serve Lord Dementis and then Immortan Joe, and ultimately she becomes Imperator Furiosa, Captain of the War Rig. And we all know what happens after that, unless of course you have not seen Mad Max Fury Road, in which case, what are you even doing here? Go watch Fury Road, then come back. The first thing I can say about this movie is it is loud. It is very much an assault on the senses. By design, every single sound in this movie is just punching you right in the face. Every single sound in this movie is just nailing you right in the face. It is very much an assault on the senses. By design, there's the roar of the engines from the war rig and Dementus motorcycles, plenty of guns and explosions and all manner of things going kaboom, and a very percussive soundtrack as well. Every once in a while, I will see someone fall asleep in a movie theater, which baffles me. Like, why are you spending money to not watch a movie. But I will tell you this, if you fall asleep during Furiosa, you're not asleep, you're in a coma. You'd have to be to sleep through that. And in addition to being very loud, it is very Australian. We have considerable use of didgeridoos in the soundtrack, as well as plenty of Australian accents. And I'm not 100% certain, but this may very well be the first time I have seen Chris Hemsworth in a movie speaking in an Australian accent which is remarkable because he's Australian. Usually he's doing some version of either British or American. It almost feels wrong to hear him speak with his normal accent, as weird as that sounds. And it's very interesting to see a movie in the Mad Max universe that does not involve Max himself, although he is technically in the movie, briefly. He doesn't actually do anything. He's just kind of standing in the background in one shot and then we move on. The story is told mostly from Furiosa's point of view and is heartbreaking almost immediately. The very first thing we see is the green place that she mentioned in Fury Road, and it looks like a paradise compared to the rest of post-apocalyptic Australia. And because of the events in Fury Road, we know that as soon as she gets captured by the biker horde, she's never gonna see it again. She becomes the unwilling adopted daughter of Dementis, but that doesn't last as she gets traded to a Morton Joe. And thanks to her wits and sheer determination, she rises through the ranks of the Citadel while trying to find a way home. I do miss Charlie's Theron, but I thought Anya Taylor-Joy was fantastic in this. As has been noted elsewhere, she doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue in the movie, at least not until the very end. Almost her entire performance is through actions and facial expressions, which would be challenging for any actor, especially if you're playing Furiosa, because that character goes through some shit. But Taylor Joy makes it work, and it brings much more weight to the few scenes where she does have dialogue, because when she does speak, you know it's going to be important. I did like her relationship with Praetorian Jack, who is played by Tom Burke. He is her predecessor as Captain of the War Rig, and also a love interest of sorts. It seems like that's what they both want, but they also understand that now is not really the time. Escape the Citadel first, bang later. They got the priorities in order. And Chris Hemsworth really had a chance to let loose in this movie. Like I said earlier, he does not have to suppress his accent, or anything else really. He more than lives up to the character's name. Dementis is delightfully mad, and also seems to have an overinflated sense of self-worth. He fancies himself a leader and lusts for power, but when he gets it, he doesn't really know what to do with it. And ultimately, he just screws everything up, and it turns out he's barely fit to run his little biker gang, much less the world. The action sequences are intense as fuck. If you saw Fury Road, you can expect more of the same. Miller truly has a gift for action, and I hope he gets to make as many of these movies as he wants. Some of the action sequences are maybe a little longer than they need to be, which is probably how the movie came to be two and a half hours long, but still very well done. I really have few complaints about this one. It's a solid action movie, an excellent prequel. Chris Hemsworth and Anya Taylor-Joy really shine in this one. I wouldn't say it's as good as Fury Road, but trying to be as good as one of the greatest action movies of all time was always going to be a tough act to follow. If you liked Fury Road, I highly recommend checking this one out as well. You don't necessarily have to see Fury Road before you watch this one, but seriously, you should watch Fury Road. And that's all I have to say about Furiosa. Until next time, take care.